So Gav, uh, Associate Professor from ANU, is that right? That's right. Um, what brings you to Mulligan's Flat Woodland Sanctuary today? Oh, well, I love this area anyway, um, so it's always a lovely place to visit. But actually today we have just done a release of one of our tracked snakes. Um, and he's from um, the Kenny area, so we've um, just released him a little bit up from where he was caught. Um, and we've um, surgically implanted a, a radio transmitter, um, subcontainer, uh, into his um, uh, salimic cavity in his abdomen. Um, we had a wildlife vet, um, Do Dr. Arian Lowe, do that amazing job for us. Um, and this is the biggest snake we've got in our project thus far. So he's 1.6 metres long. Um, he's a boy, clearly I'm saying he, he, he. Um, and he also weighs in at 880 grams. Um, and we're really interested in, um, you know, comparing you know, this, this uh, large snake's movement um, behaviours and signature compared to some of the other males we've got in the project in different types of landscapes. So we have another male at Mount Taylor, um, who's really fascinating and moves a lot um, and quite a long way and has very sort of designated range, but that, that's all been kind of um, disrupted by the breeding season. So these males, um, their movement becomes much more erratic um, during those times when the females are leaving pheromones and they're kind of moving around tasting tasting the air the scent and moving in there smelling the smelling the air and getting in there um so yeah so so this guy's um this guy's going to be tracked uh, very regularly and we're going to see how long he stays in this lovely dry creek or water at this time uh, creek bed area um and then um yeah we've got a transmitter in him for about 400 days it's going to last and it's got a fantastic signal and range we're really excited a new a new um, technology we're using new transmitter um and um we will just compare his movements to the other snakes we've got in the project. We've now got 10 snakes that have got transmitters now um, surgically implanted. So we've got a nice sample starting to emerge. And we now have some pairs as well, which we've actually caught two adult snakes, a male and a female together. So we can actually release them together and compare their movement behaviors so too. Just on that, Gavin, your, your relocation research builds on a long history of translocations and reintroductions at the sanctuary. What's, what are the key research questions you're trying to ask? Um, tagging these snakes and following around the landscape? Yeah, so one of the things we're really interested in is that, you know, eastern brown snakes are, and this is this study solely looks at eastern brown snakes, that's the common snake people are going to encounter in the Canberra and surrounds area. Um, they're actually, despite the fact we fear them a lot and we encounter them a lot, we don't really know an awful lot about their movement ecology and their spatial ecology. So this project's seeking to build on some great work that was done by Pat Whitaker and Richard Shine um, in an agricultural landscape, looking at the movement behaviours, the movement ecology of eastern brown snakes. Um, but we're looking, of course, at urban adapted um, eastern brown snakes, which adds a really interesting variable to the mix. And these, these snakes are very comfortable moving through the suburbs um, through the spring and summer, but also very comfortable too, I would argue, based on the research we've done, very comfortable in the reserves as well. So they're quite hybrid kind of snakes that move between these kinds of areas. So um, one of the key questions we're interested in is just sort of adding to that amazing literature on the, the, East, the movement of College of Eastern Brown Snakes. It's one thing, an urban adapted Eastern Brown Snakes. But also we're really interested in um, this thing, as you said, called translocation, which is the process through which people like myself, and there's some great snake catchers in the Canberra region and around Australia, fantastic snake catchers, um, are catching snakes on a very regular basis, like these guys, um, and they're moving them to a new environment and letting them go. And we really don't know very much, uh, very little about what happens to those translocated snakes after they've moved from their home range, their designated home range, and that can be of variable size, depending on male, female size of snake, type of snake species, to um, to this new environment. And, you know, they're, they, obviously they're trying to minimise the human snake, the pet snake conflict by doing that translocation. That's the ethics of it. But we just want to build on the knowledge of what happens to these snakes when they're released. So we've just seen this wonderful big snake being released, actually not far from where he was caught. Um, and over time, we want to sort of see, does this snake move back towards where he is his point of capture? Certainly that's around, around that point of capture. So that's a key part of the project.